all, welcome back to Green Hill Junction. Um, right, we're going to move on to building the platforms. Um, however, what I wanted to do first was basically figure out how I am going to um, detail the platform, uh, decorate the platform, whatever you want to say. Now, um, I didn't want to go down the route of just having a bit of wood with some paper stuck to it. Um, I had um, cardboard platforms last time because I didn't know really any different and I wanted to do the easy way and they were fine, there's nothing wrong with them but I wanted to try and get some textures in um, so it looks more realistic um, and the platforms that I'm wanting to try and copy or model are um, on the West Highland line uh, which runs from Glasgow to Fort William um, in particular Tullock Station and Spaybridge Station um, which I'll put up a couple of photos of just now so you get an idea So as you can see these um, are red ash or red gravel um, platforms with um, the paving stones along the edge with the white the white line on the um, very edge of the platform. Um, on the face of it, quite simple platforms, um, but if you look closely at the photos, it's not all red ash, there's a bit of black through there, there's a bit of brown, um, and it's the texture I'm really interested in um, of the ash. I want to try and model that. Um, on a side note, if you've never been on the West Highland line yet, go on it. It is the most scenic line I've ever been on, even if you're not into trains. Um, I did the West Highland Way with my mates a few years ago. We mountain biked all the way up it, and then we got the train from Fort William back to Glasgow. I spent hours just looking out the window at the scenery. It was stunning. And my mate's an ornithologist, and he was pointing out all the birds of prey that were about, and it was just, it was absolutely brilliant. I highly recommend it, um, just for the scenery alone um, to go for a trip on that line. But anyway, moving on. So the guddle of stuff you can see here is me basically experimenting trying to get something to represent the texture of the red ash and the colour. So what I thought was going to be the best option was I got some red oxide uh, sandpaper. Um, but this looked different in the photo online than what I got. This is 120 grit. And you can see it's quite a it's quite a maroon colour. It's not really the, the colour of the red ash and it's also really quite shiny, quite gloss. You can just see the light catching it there. Now on this bit, I've cut out a bit, you'll see why in a bit. This bit I tried to dull it down. So what I did was I basically got a whole load of ramekins um, and filled them with a wash. It was probably about 60% paint, 40% water. And then I just got sponges and uh, I just did that, dabbed it on, wiped it off, got another colour, dabbed it on, wiped it off and so on and so forth. Until I got what you can see on the dull section there. So I did use quite a bit of black to try and just change the colour and to dull it down. And it has taken the shine off it but it's still not the right colour and I'm not really happy with the texture either. The other issue was, even though I was um, I was dabbing, the sandpaper was grabbing little flecks from the sponges. So believe it or not, I ended up hoovering this, things you do, um, to get rid of that. Um, so that was plan A, which wasn't too bad. Um, plan B, however, is what I think I'm going to go for. Now, I saw John at Piccadilly do something similar to this something similar, pretty much the same thing, but he did it with bits of sponge that he put through a, a liquidizer um, for his scenery. Um, what I have done uh, is, I'll just bring this in. Um, now, I have not started um, dabbling in any illegal drugs before anyone thinks that. <laughs> what this is, is it's cork dust that I have dyed. Um, and I've done a red, Uh, black and I know cork dust is brown but it's quite a light brown so this is basically burnt umber 
um, to make it more brown or darker brown. Um, and this worked out quite well. What I'm going to do first of all is because I need to make more of this red anyway because red's going to be the predominant colour. I'll show you how I did it. So I'm basically I'm working small scale. So I've got one of these glass ramekins from a chocolate pudding basically. Um, and if you look back at the video of me doing the scratch build, not the scratch build, the kit build bowstring bridge, most of it is this colour. Um, so what I've done is, because this is quite a red ash colour, is I just put a blob of that in. There's not much of this left, I need to buy more when I can get to B&Q. So put a blob of that in. It is quite, it's quite pinky. So take the black, and this is quite a strong black. So oh, actually, I just want a dot. You know what's going to happen? A big blob's going to come out. Come okay, on. There you go. That's really all I want. And then I want to mix that with some water, but I forgot to bring some water to the table. So I will be back in a second when I've got water. Right, sorry about that. I'm back with some water. So like I said, I'm not doing this exact. It's maybe 50-50. So put some water in. And then just get an old stick. And I'm basically making a, a wash. This uh, this paint does kind of go a bit funny when you first mix it. It goes kind of stringy, so you got um, to kind of work at it, make sure it's all mixed in. It does go there eventually. You see that's went ah, it's almost went a brownie red actually. Don't know if that's going to be darker than the last one. Maybe I should actually measure this. But hey ho, it's all about different colours and textures. Isn't it? That's most of that mixed in. Now, what you need is um, so fine granulated cork. I've had this for a while. I used it on my last way out to um, what do you use it for? It's for like uh, trails, like trails through the fields and um, but to represent soil and things like that. That's what I used it for. So basically. All you need to do is just put it in. Now you actually you need quite a bit because you need to soak up all this water. Um, so as you can see, I have put rather a lot in there, and it's just a case of stirring it in. Uh, it will look like it's going to go all stuck together and all gloopy. Just stick with it. Keep on mixing it. Get that out of my way. Make sure this is because this is an old pudding ramekin, it's one of these odd shapes, you know. So you, you make sure you get a stick in. Now, that to me is a little bit wetter than what I had the last time, so I'm going to add a little bit more. Is I'm never going to get two batches the same, but when it's all mixed together, it's all going to look quite different tones of red. Or so it's it's going to look, um, you know, it's going to add something to it without me having to like dry brush it, weather or anything like that. 
Right, that doesn't feel too bad now. Right, so you can see it's turned the cork a nice sort of ash colour. Now, what you need to do is let me get rid of my first load. Get a bit of tin foil, it's the only thing this probably isn't going to stick to, and tip it all out onto the tin foil. You know what? You can probably use something better than what I'm using. I just grabbed what was spare in the kitchen cupboard, to be quite honest, and we've got loads of these ramekins lying about because I quite like chocolate puddings. Excuse me as the dog coughs up a hairball. Spread that out over your tin foil. And what you need to do now is leave that to dry for 24 hours at least. So if I pick this up now, it'll basically it'll clump. I can almost mold it. See what I mean? So that's useless to me just now. But once it dries, it goes back to just coloured cork dust. So, leave that to dry for 24 hours. Don't need to put it on a radiator or anything like that. Just, I'll leave it sitting on the kitchen table, much to my wife's disgust, because um, it turns into a modeling table. But if you've got room in your modeling room, just leave it lying there, as long as there's enough heat to dry it out. So, now that I've done that, I then went on to mocking up a platform and got a spare bit of wood and created this. So this is the edging, it's just Metcalf paving stones um, and what I did here was I just put down a layer of PVA and then I got my static grass applicator because it's got a really fine sieve on it and I sieved the red on first of all because I want the smallest granules, I don't want the biggest granules because I'm really conscious that I don't want it to look like ballast um, and then once the red was down I got a tiny little bit of the black and did the same, tiny little bit of the brown and did the same. This side is the painted uh, sandpaper so it's the bit that's missing from there um, which actually doesn't look too bad but to me it's just the wrong colour and it's the wrong texture and I can't think of anything to do to sort that out and also to use this I'm going to have to make more templates and then my cuttings are going to have to be really accurate to make sure there's no, there's no gaps which will make it look terrible whereas this all I need to do is sprinkle that now, the one problem we've got with this is you can see that you can still see the wood through in places. So what I'll need to do is paint the wood the same colour that I'm dyeing the red cork. So I'm going to make up uh, a solution with no water in it and just paint the wood before I put the cork down and that'll take care of this problem. But I really quite like the, the cork dust effect. Also, we see the, the texture there, but I think if you refer back to the photos, that is a quite a good match. So, what I'm going to go with is this. Um, plus, it's quite good fun to do, to be honest as well. Um, so, I'm going to have to make up quite a bit more of the red stuff um, before I uh, I get the platforms cut out. Um, and then we'll uh, we'll get on to decorating it. So to be honest, I think that video is now going to be about 15, 20 minutes long. So I think I'm going to cut it at that. Um, but that's my idea for um, detailing the platforms. Um, I do have for along the edge. I've got the um, weathered aslar or something like that. It's called stone to stick on. And obviously these 
these um, paving stones will stick out a little bit to form an edge. I just stuck them first there because this was just a mock up I was doing. Um, but yeah, so, um, so yeah, let me know what you think of that. Um, let me know if you get any suggestions what to do with this or if I've just to scrap it um, and go with uh, the cork dust. But uh, aye, so how to uh, how to model a red ash station or platform even. <laughs> All right, so um, thanks for watching. Let me know what you think. Uh, subscribe to the channel and you'll see the platforms getting built very very shortly. Um, and thanks very much for watching. Cheers.